Ma'am, it says here you were born in 1908. That makes you 45 years old. That's right. Adeline Marie Bowman was born on January 1st, 1908. Many years later, she would begin a family of her own. On a cold winter night in 1935, Adeline's life would change forever. In that moment, something incredible happened. Its effect was almost magical. Adeline Bowman will henceforth be immune to the ravages of time. She will never age another day. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Miss Bowman. The next time we see each other, I'll have a new identity. I'll always be your mother, and I'll always be my daughter. Happy birthday, Mama. You look exactly like this old friend of mine. We were very close. Don't you miss having someone to love? It's not the same when there's no growing old together. Without that love is just heartbreak. I'm Alice. Pleasure to meet you. I'll just wait with you. Thank you, but I'll manage. Wait! How do we get in touch? First time I saw you, I knew I had to meet you. I didn't know when or how, but I knew I would. How is this possible? All these years, you've lived, but you've never had a life. I don't know how. Tell me something I can hold on to forever and never let go. Let go. I've been running for so long. Adeline! I don't know how to stop. Wow. Fun, right? <laughs> this is fun, yeah. Thank you all for coming out. We're so excited to have you, and we're so excited about this film. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved? Um, well, I think they were getting really close to, to their, the start of their shoot, and they uh, thankfully hadn't found their, uh, their Ellis yet. And... Um, so I heard about this project, and I, you know, I heard, like I said, it's called The Age of Adeline, and stars Blake Lively, Harrison Ford, Ellen Burstyn. I was like, okay, I want to be in this movie, you know. That was before I'd read the script, and, and when I started reading the script, I, I, I was kind of, you know, um, you know, taken by this, this, this beautiful journey that um, Adeline, Blake Lively's character, takes through time, and and how, how, how the movie plays with that theme of, of, of eternal youth being a burden, really. And, and um, I thought, for me, the opportunity to play the man opposite her that, that eventually breaks down the walls that she has kept up around herself for so long w w would be, you know, awesome. So. And is this your first major leading man role in a film? Um, yeah, t yeah, to a certain extent. It's my first major leading man role in in a major film in a in a full on hollywood production with Harrison Ford playing my dad yeah, yeah. and cool. to some extent i never thought it would ever happen to me um, but i you know i um, i kind of felt feel like i i started all over again 6 years ago um, but when I moved to the U.S., but prior to that, I, I've been acting my whole life, really, since a kid, and uh, back in the Netherlands, which is where I'm from originally, so um, I've played um, a lot of leading roles on um, feature films back there, but they, uh, you know, for some reason, uh, you guys have never seen them. I guess <laughs> part of it is because they're in Dutch, you know. Well, yeah. now we see you everywhere on uh, almost every TV I am show. Everywhere. But we'll get into that a little later. I want to stick to the film for a little bit. Um, so tell me kind of about the concept of the film is this, this woman doesn't age past 29. And so there's that factor that 
we all don't want to get older and we all don't want to age, but Adeline has to struggle with the opposite, which is she doesn't age and she doesn't get to experience what everyone does in their lifetime. Exactly. And, and one of the things that I means she feels like, you know, to, to have a, you know, a, a normal life to a certain extent, she feels like she needs to, to basically live a life on the move. Um, because if she stays in, in one place for too long, people will, will start to find out that she's not aging, right? Um, because of that, she's basically, you know, denying herself relationships with people and, and denying herself love because love to her means uh, heartbreak, you know? She'll outlive the people around her. So, uh, I mean, but now I make it sound like a very sad story. And I think at times it is. But in the end, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a positive message. And it's, and it's a beautiful, romantic story, I think. What was it like working with Blake Lively? Yeah, it was really fun. I mean, um, of course, you know, when you're doing a, a romantic movie like The Age of Adeline, I think it's very important that there's some sort of whatever, whatever you want to call it, chemistry or something between, um, you know, the, the two characters that, that are, are falling in love with each other. And I don't really think that that's something you can create, you know. Um, it's just kind of there or it's not. And, well, it's up to the audience to decide whether it's there or not. But I, I, I felt right from the start that we that we had a great rapport and that we had fun. And I think, I think that we both were very excited and happy to, to tell this story and to portray these characters. And I mean, I, I think her role was very challenging to play a 107-year-old woman in the body of a 29-year-old. I mean, how, how the hell are you gonna do that? And I think she did an amazing job and that made my, my job of playing the man that falls for her pretty easy. I saw um, Ryan Reynolds, her husband, actually tweeted that yes. somebody said you guys had great chemistry, and he's like, hey, I'm right here. Watch it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that, too. I, I thought it was a very cool response uh, from his part, yeah. yeah. And how was it, you know, you both have come from a TV background. So did you guys ever talk about that, bringing, you know, your TV backgrounds to the set? Um, no, no, <laughs> no. But you're right, we've both have done a lot of TV and, and it's a very different thing, you know, and um, it's, it's fun to work on, on, you know, a couple of great TV shows that I've, I, I've had, you know, I've been able to work on and to have the, the, the opportunity to kind of build a slow, you know, a long arc and, and, and get the audience to slowly get to know your character. But on the other hand, to, to work on a movie for three months and, and to be really nitpick, be able to nitpick on, on, the, on, the, on the arc and knowing where your character is going is fun too. You know? I, I, I really enjoyed that on, on this movie and I'm very happy that I'm able to continue to do both. Uh, work on Game of Thrones and, and you know, whenever I'm not shooting there, I'm shooting a movie somewhere. It's yeah. great. Where was this movie shot? Um, in San Francouver. San Francouver. <laughs> so you shot it in Vancouver, but they filmed a lot of the exteriors, obviously, in San Francisco. You got it. Yes, I got it. And it's pretty good, you know? I mean, uh, I, last time, I, uh, last time I, I, I saw the movie, I, I, I tried to look for it. Yeah. I think they did a great job. Well, because on Game of Thrones, you get to travel all over the place pretty much, right? Or is your character kind of in a, are you in Croatia or? No, we, we, we shoot all over the place on Game of Thrones. Um, I only do the warm stuff that's in my contract. I don't do the wall or any of that stuff. You know, Daenerys is not going up there, you know. Not in those outfits. Not with me. <laughs> not in my outfit. No, yeah. Although, you know, I only have two outfits, you know. It's either my armor or it's nothing, so I mean. <laughs> I can't take my armor off at the wall, you know, it's like, but no, but really, you're right. We shoot, a lot of our stuff is shot around Belfast, where we also have our stages. Um, and then for, for, the, for my storyline with Daenerys, we usually shoot around a Split in Croatia. And this year we, sh we shot quite a bunch in uh, the south of Spain as well. It's a tough life. 
be on one of the most successful TV shows. Yeah, too. so tough. Well, um, how was that for you coming in? Because you replaced um, another actor, and so the fans noticed that right away. How was that for you, though? Nobody really seemed to notice. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, of course, that was really weird. Um, <clears throat> And, and not, you know, uh, something you would really want, you know, having, uh, you know, replacing an actor on the show. But th it just happened. I'm very ha happy for the opportunity. And um, I think by now, this uh, is season five, this is my second season portraying this character. So I hope by now the, uh, the audience has have, have accepted me as um, the, character, uh, the actor that portrays this character, you know. And did you read any of the books? Did I read the books? Yes. Yeah, well, I started reading uh, the first book. And, um, I mean, God, it's so good. And it's, it's fun to um, read it and, and kind of see how they translated it into the, uh, um, into the series and how the book is really told from all these different characters where every time you have a different perspective. And, um, but by now, season five, we're digressing more and more, you know, we're... Um, I don't, I, I mean, I'm so afraid of spoiling anything, you know, um, but I can say that we're, we're kind of going off the books now. Well, some book wrote a, readers notice that you don't have the typical blue hair that your character has in the books. Did you guys discuss that at all? Or? Yeah, of course. But, well, it, it was never really a discussion. Um, but yeah, I, 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 ta I talked about it once with, um, David and Dan are, are writers and producers, and it was like, yeah, you know, it's like, it works great in a book, but, I mean, on the screen, you're going to be looking at this dude with blue hair or a blue beard, you know, with that. And I think that's a smart choice, you know? Well, there's also this, uh, before I wrap up our Game of Thrones discussion, there's this fan theory going around that Dario Naharis is actually maybe Ned Stark's long-lost brother. Ah. And I wanted to know if you can give us any insight on that fan theory. I think that's a great theory. <laughs> God. Kind of look like a Stark. You could you pull what it off. What are those people smoking? Seriously. <laughs> no, it could be. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe I'll get be surprised in, in you know, at some point. Yeah. And then speaking of other TV shows, you are also on Orphan Black. Yeah, that's another fun show with a with a whole, you know, with a very strong um, passionate group of fans, you know, a passionate following. So it's, it's a great honor to, to be on, on that show uh, as well. Um, and, you know, kudos to uh, uh, Tatjana Maslani, who's really doing an amazing job on that show. I was going to say, if you got cloned, how would you feel about playing 13 different characters? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's ridiculous. I don't, I mean, that's insane. What she's doing is is way out on that show. It's one of the reasons why I was very happy to um, to be part of it. Um, for some reason, though, last year, I, I I mean, I didn't all shoot it at the same time, but it all these three shows that I had worked on at some point all aired at the same time, <laughs> which is not really something I set out to do to kind of dominate TV at some point, but. It was very cool, though, and it, and it um, I think, gave me a little bit of a platform and gave me eventually the opportunity to do movies, you know, and, and I'm very thankful for that. At the same time, though, I think it's important um, to make a choice uh, and commit to a show. So I'm doing that now, and, and, and that show is Game of Thrones. So, um, yeah. Although I am a little sad that you're not on Nashville anymore because I did really, does anyone else watch Nashville out there? <laughs> come on, are you gonna come back? Please come back. Thank you. <laughs> um, how was it work, you got to work with Connie Britton, you work with Amelia Clark, Tatiana, like you said, these are incredible, Blake Lively, incredible women to uh, work yeah. with. How's that? Do you learn anything Tough from, life. yeah? <laughs> you know, again, like shooting in Spain with all these, God, you know, they're all so different, but they all make my job so easy. You know, they're fun to work with. They're talented, passionate, and, you know, they're, they're where they are for a reason. You know, they're awesome. And you were also on Treme, I wanted to point out as well. 
geez, this guy's everywhere, right? Am I right? And he's right in front of me now. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind you, too, oh actually. God. Yeah. <laughs> and here. Now, ah, that's it. That's You're it. everywhere. <laughs> um, and you also were in Wild as well. So tell me about your um, career going into movies. What's your plans moving My forward? My plan is to be everywhere. Yeah. So. Clearly, I figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, oh God, I, I, you know, you, this is, I, I'm, I'm kind of starting to get where I was hoping that I would at some point in my life get, you know, as an actor, that I would be able to, to um, you know, tell great stories and, and play leading roles and stuff. Um, at the same time, I feel like I've, I, I, I've, I've, just, I've only just started, you know. I, I, I want to play a wide variety of roles. And what did this movie, Age of Adeline, teach you about, you know, shooting a movie and how it's different from TV? Um, well, I think that's kind of, uh, my answer would be pro probably sound a little similar to what I've mentioned before, where it's, it's just, you know where your character is going, you know the story from beginning to end, so you can really, you can really think about how you're gonna deliver that and how you're gonna layer your character in order to, to make that arc potentially work as best as possible. Um, I really enjoyed that process, and, and I, uh, you know, I, I, I hope to do it many more times. That's great. Well, I know we have lots and lots of fans out there, so I kind of want to open it up to everyone and for questions. See, look at this. Hi there. Um, thank you so much for coming. I'm big Game of Thrones fan. Uh, Daenerys aside, who would you choose to sit on the Iron Throne? Um, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Sansa. Sansa Stark. You know, I have the feeling that her storyline is 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 been going. You know, it's it's getting darker and darker, and and um, you know the trouble she's going through and and the hardships of her life. It's kind of like the, the these are the moves that the, that the show makes. You know, somebody's on the rise, boom. Somebody's going down, they might rise at some point. So, I mean, it should be Daenerys, obviously, but. Um, after that, I'm, I'm putting my money on Sansa. Hi, Mikio. Hi, Lee. Hey. Uh, congratulations on the film. Really Thank looking you. forward to it. Uh, was it. How did you approach this film, being that it had such a unique premise for a film, and was it nerve-wracking being your first big Hollywood production with this kind of premise? Um, well, although it's kind of... The, the story really has this magical sci-fi maybe element to it, right, with the woman not aging. At the same time, the way it's told is it's kind of, it feels very grounded and very real. And my character also doesn't really know about this woman's past. He just thinks she's very mysterious and she's not, you know, showing everything and then he knows that there's more to her story, but he just, you know, he, th he just thinks she, she's very interesting. So in, in that sense, I didn't really have to work on you know, trying to understand how is this possible, like Blake had to for her character, right, portraying this old woman in the body of Blake Lively. Um, and is it nerve-wracking to, to play my first lead on a Hollywood production? Um, a little bit, maybe. First hour, first half hour when we do a first rehearsal and Blake and I meet for the first time, or... First time, I'm, I, you know, I, we start shooting and you feel the producers behind the cameras. Of course, I feel like a little bit like I don't want to mess this up. But then, you know, once you, once you start doing it, you, I, you know, I I've been doing this such a long time that then you kind of forget all about that and the world kind of um, gets smaller and becomes whatever is in front of the camera, basically. And um, I... I really forget that there's ever going to be people watching the, the movie, um, which is probably uh, just, to, which helps me probably to, to stay in whatever story we're telling, right? So, short answer is, it's a little scary at the beginning, but 
you know, um, I, I'm able to kind of put it aside, I think, and enjoy um, working on a, on a movie like that. Um, so when I was a kid, I was a huge fan of Highlander, immortality concept, and I loved to fantasize what it would be like for me. So my question derives from that. What if you've been granted immortality irreversibly? So what's, what would be your game plan for the next 100 years? What careers would you like to try? What shows? Would you have a blog? Would I, have a bl I, I would have a blog about my life and my immortality. I like that. Um, I think in another, in another uh, life, I would have loved to be um, an architect. So, um, and, and another thing that I would, have, would like to do if I would be immortal is I would love to live on every continent of the world for like, not just for a couple months, but let's say 10 years on every, every continent, including, including Antarctica, you know. Um, <laughs> So, and then maybe we can combine both. You know, I build something on every continent. <laughs> Is that an answer? Yeah. Thank you. Hey. I wanted to know, uh, since you're Khaleesi's new man, have you... Yeah. Have you run you into... Betcha. Have you betcha. Uh, have you run into Cal Drogo? And has that been awkward? That's going to be awkward. <laughs> you know, I always thought that Dario, my character, is one of the meanest warriors, you know, he's kind of like this, I mean, he'll, he'll, if he needs a sneaky way to take someone down, he'll do it the sneaky way, no matter what, you know, he'll take you down. Khal Drogo, on the other hand, <laughs> he's, he's a mean big guy, so I don't know, <laughs> he'll probably avoid him, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, oh. So... Your co-stars, Natalie Dormer and Kit Harrington, have gone on the record saying they would like more male nudity on the show. <laughs> and now Anna Kendrick has jumped on the train and wants you specifically. What are your thoughts on your character's full frontal male nudity and general male nudity on the show? Wow. She's going for it. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to sneak it in. Next question. We did see a we did see a little sneak peek uh, in the premiere episode, guys. So, one more. See, this is going so fast. <laughs> so you've been on obviously a lot of movies. Do you have any weird fan interactions since you're on Game of Thrones um, that you'd like to share? Um, it's no, you know, I'm I'm generally just thrilled and 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 uh, flattered whenever someone comes up to me. The other day, though, I, I walked through um, customs and, and security at LAX, and uh, someone walked up to me, pulled out my picture, pulled out a pen, and was like, do you, want, do you want to sign? And I was like, yeah, man, you got to be kidding me. You're, you're such a super fan. I mean, you're traveling <laughs> with my picture? Like, of course I'm going to sign. Do you want anything else signed, you know? And then we walked off, and my publicist is like, yeah, you know, he probably found out that you were going to be here. He probably buys, like, uh, lists of people that are traveling, and he's just waiting here all day for everybody that he found on the list. You happen to be on the list. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I thought yeah, that right. was a little weird. Um, it kind of killed the moment. Well, this has been so fun. It went so fast. 30 minutes went so fast. But everyone, make sure to check out Age of Adeline, which hits theaters on Friday. And watch Game of Thrones, of course, which I'm, all, I'm sure you're all doing anyway. <laughs> I don't but, have to tell that. Awesome. But thank you for being thank here. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>